Hi, I'm Kate McKay, and welcome to another episode of How to Not Only Survive, But Thrive Through These Challenging Times. And today, I'm really excited to have Sean Sumner join me today. Sean, I've known through my experience at self-publishing school, but I would like to also read his bio. Um, Sean Sumner is a best-selling author. He is a business coach um, for self-publishing school and a full-time physical therapist at UC Davis Medical Center. He um, works to help ex um, exercise professionals and experts of all kinds get their message out into the world. Thank you so much for coming, Sean. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know that I love you. I love your message. Um, I'm happy to help in these, uh, just get people motivated during these times. So this is something that I've been lucky enough to be in a position uh, where I have uh, been part of the online world and some ways to really make change and make big changes in people's life. Uh, and yeah. I'm happy to help share some of those uh, as we're going through. So every single thing that Sean says is like a little golden nougat. And Sean's been really instrumental in helping me launch my best-selling book, Claim Your Inner Badass. And Sean's information will also be available for you to find out more about him in the notes of the show. So Sean, how are you managing through this time? I think you're busy as ever, if not more so. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm one of those people who right now I'm very, very busy. So, um, you know, as I work as a frontline healthcare professional, so I am uh, in the hospital still working. We are still uh, ramped up and we are still seeing lots of patients. Luckily, our hospital right now does not have many cases. And so it's just a lot of preparation. Uh, and so we are preparing and cleaning everything, uh, but we are getting ready for an influx. But I also still have the online world that I work in. And so that's uh, luckily, again, with that has been something that people are expecting more time in and there there's more people looking to uh, transition to getting their word online or to getting their message or their business um, so I have a lot of people coming to me uh, for help with that uh, and then uh, some little things like you know that we have a, a great mastermind community at self-publishing school for authors to come together and we have more authors than ever who are spending time writing their book taking this time to get their message out uh, and then, of course, the little things, you know, life still goes on for the kids. And so if kids home, uh, we have a virtual volleyball practice coming up. We have virtual That's hula so classes, awesome. you know, so we have lots of things that are still keeping us busy for sure. That's so awesome. So, uh, yeah, that's amazing. And just a, a note on self-publishing school, just because, I, you know, I literally saw a YouTube video on self-publishing school and bought a program and received a welcome package from you guys in like three days. And it's an incredible, if anyone is looking to, uh, to self-publish their book, I absolutely look at self-publishing school. You can find them all over online and we'll also share that information as well. So Sean, how are you um, particularly managing personally um, uh, the, the level of stress that's underlying? Because again, we're talking from not only surviving, but thriving and clear, clearly you're a man that's motivated to thrive and help others. And wh what is your general sense um, on what's going on with people and how best you see we can support people, particularly men? Because we talk oftentimes about the elderly being a risk, but for me, it's also like, other marginalized um, community and men included, because for us women, uh, creating social connections pretty easy for us. And men have used sport and their work and also the gym to create that environment. So what advice or what's your sense on uh, advice that we could give people in regards to that whole slob of stuff I just said? Well, I mean, there's a lot of really important things that you said right there. And I'm going to, I would love to be able to say as busy as I am, it's not affecting me, but it, the truth is it affects everybody. Mm -hmm. The level of stress is really high in my household as it, you know, just in me personally, because I have to know, wow, you know, what if people are no longer spending money on, on their online business because they're holding it back? Like, right. is that going to affect me? I have to know, does my wife who she can't see patients because they can't go in her house, is that going to affect our personal finances? Mm -hmm. We can't go to the gym. I can't exercise and get some of that stress level out. My kids are now like, am I doing the right thing for them? Are they getting enough schooling at home? Are they getting exercise and getting out? And now I feel compelled to be there more for them. So, you know, I, I don't want to say that things are bad for me because they're not, but I want people to understand that um, I feel like I am busy uh, and I have a lot of things and even I am under, under that stress level. So I know that it's out there and I see and I work with people on a daily basis where they're either worried about their health, they're worried about their emotional status, uh, or they're worried about their business. Uh, and so just to kind of key on a few of those things that you talked about is, is you know, you, you talked about men specifically. Um, and, you know, I can tell you that I, I feel very much that I need to be the leader in my household for this. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think a lot of guys too, whether you're married, whether you're single, you want to say, no, I need to, I need to lead through this 
this shouldn't stop me. Um, but you have to, this is, this is something that's never been seen before. And so you mm -hmm. have to be able to take a minute and say, yes, this is affecting me. Uh, and I need to make sure that I have strategies for that. Um, whether it is, you know, there's little things that I think are important, but one of them is schedule. Um, and because so many of us now are, our schedules are thrown just completely for a loop, whether you're now working from home, which you weren't, or you have time where you're, you're not working at all, uh, or your gym time is normally 5 a.m. or 6 p.m. and it's not there anymore. Uh, I think one of the biggest things that we can do for ourselves and for the people around us is to get, get a schedule and say, this is what I'm doing when, and let others know what that schedule is. Mm -hmm. So in my household, we have volleyball practice tonight. Like I'm leading the practice. It's at 3.45 to 5, you know, like it's, that's the time it is. And so we need to make sure we adjust things around it. So it's not just like, oh, we'll go outside when we feel like it. Um, you know, we'll wake up when we feel like it. Uh, a schedule for anybody out there is really, really important. And it's important to write it down and be accountable to that. So whether it's you share it with your spouse, you share it with your gym partner. Um, you know, a lot of us, uh, if you're single and you, and you had someone that you went to the gym with, like, let them know, this is the time I'm working out. Let's work, let's both work out of this time together, whether we connect via Skype or Zoom or not. Like keeping those schedules to me uh, is probably the number one important thing to help keep you from going crazy during this, right? I mean, it's right. really easy just to lose yeah, everything. Yeah, monkey mind to the yeah. end, like ape mind. I mean, this is like intense times. And I think that's true. Like um, this is a level playing field right now. And first of all, I really appreciate you sharing that because I think you're right that this is a time where men can stand up because there is that pressure like the provider and holding down um, the fort. And that hasn't been that, um, you know, that has things, I think this is shifting the conversation around that. And I applaud you to be able to just have this type of conversation with me. And part of what I'm doing with Claim Your Inner uh, Badass is creating a male version of that called Claim Your Inner Warrior. And my intro chapter, which I promise I will add to your draft uh, complete list soon, is focusing on men machismo and self-care which really is what does self-care look like for men? And often what the studies have found is it's built in community and connection. And I love your point, and I haven't heard it messaged like that in regards to not only creating a schedule that works for you, but sharing your schedule and bringing other people into your community of how you're planning your life so other people can build in around that. That is a golden nugget right there, Sean. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, we haven't really talked yet about how to thrive in business, but this is how to thrive personally. Yes. And I think that's really, really important because, um, you know, if, if a lot of what you said is true, we are built to be social uh, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we're isolated, but there's still ways to be social. I have friends that are doing virtual happy hours, right? They're yeah. getting online with their friends. They say, okay, from five to six, we are, you know, we're, we're doing this, we're hanging out, right. um, you know, gym workouts and whether it's with someone or not. But I think having that social interaction in some way uh, is really, really important. It's and key. with sports gone, oh man, it what makes it tough. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's so true. And even for you as a coach, because I know you're super involved with coaching your girls, which I love to follow by the way. So I just want to pivot because this is why I really brought you here aside from this really amazing conversation. And you've keyed a term, which I absolutely love, which is an online movement. Like we are moving online as a business and a personal community. So I know you have a couple summits going on. Please tell us more. And also because you are a master at these tools and the reason why I am doing this on Zoom is partly because of our experience when we did our expert in interview and I realized how wonderful and how uh, amazing it is to ab able to create this level of intimacy and share this conversation with others. So please share because you are the master at these online tools. <laughs> well, thank you. So uh, yeah, the online movement is something that's been happening for, for a long time. So I had my first uh, online movement summit about five years ago. Uh, and this is where we, we brought business owners and people to come in to teach other, at this point, I was really targeting exercise professionals. So whether it's Pilates, studio owners, uh, gym owners, people like that, how to take their business online and be successful. Um, and so this has been going on for a while now. And one of the problems is we had a lot of people who were just so focused on their, like, this is, I work with people, whether it's healthcare professionals, whether it's exercise professionals, whether it's other businesses, they had their, their one way of working and th the movement was always going online. And I think that that is so important and people are seeing that now. And a lot of businesses that said, oh, we can't have people work from home are now realizing not only can we, we need to, and we should be yes. doing this uh, right. and it's opening the doors. And so 
some of the things that are really important as you start to transition, whether it's your personal business, whether you're an entrepreneur or you have a small, medium, large size business is number one, having a strategy for it. Like this is the reason I'm doing this. And number two, knowing the tools that are out there. Right. And it's really important, uh, not only just to have that strategy, but to understand how the tools can make you successful. Uh, and so you have to look at what your business is doing currently. And so currently you have a message, you're getting that message out to people, whether it's in person as people are walking by your store, uh, whether it's going out and making phone calls, you have a message you need to get out. There's online avenues to do that. There's a lot of ways to get your message to, to uh, engage with people online, whether that's through social media. So you need to engage with them. Then you need to listen to them. Mm -hmm. Right. And so you need to have a way to listen to those people that are out there and what they're saying and what they need. Right. So you need to have a way to connect with people. Um, and then you need to have a way to educate people on what, why your service or what you're doing is appropriate. And if you can engage, listen and educate, then you can really bring in those customers and be successful. You can also really start to build relationships uh, with people online because mm -hmm. you don't want to just go out there and assume everybody wants to hear your message because that's not how you would start a conversation in the real life. You True. wouldn't just go and say, Kate, here's what I have. This is why it's good for you as you're walking by, right? Yeah, right. You would engage first. You would talk a little bit. You would get to know, you would listen to why they're here, why they are doing what they're doing. And then you would educate on why your service or your, you as a uh, professional are the right fit for them, right? Oh, so you need so to have good. those tools to do so. That is so yeah. good. Well, I love that idea of, I just uh, published an article today about um, finding peace and uncertainty and it just published on my local paper. And a big piece of that is like, this is, is in a way helping us build a greater sense of intimacy, not only with ourselves but in our relationships, not only personally, but professionally. And really what is a, a, a sales cycle? What is a business connection? And what does that intimacy look like? And the most important thing is the listening piece. Like it's enough we can blab, blab, blab. You know, it's like, we're not, you know, t uh, TV and just pitching our wares. That model is over people. It's over. So this is really a time for us to step up and connect with people. And a lot of people are not used to this, Sean. They are so yeah. disturbed because they don't even know how to use this technology. Right. Well, and, it's because you used, used to right? have an ad like, and yes. you would send an ad out and your ad just said, this is what we have. Come, come, come find us. Right. right? And that's yeah. not how advertising on the internet works. It works yeah. differently when you're on a social platform. If you're on social media, if you say Facebook ads, which are a huge way to reach people, in business, but it's not just saying, here's something, go get it. It's asking a question about you, mm -hmm. allowing them to engage with you mm -hmm. so that you can have a platform to listen to them. And mm -hmm. so you have to have that mindset set shift a little bit. Um, and, and again, so knowing the tools. And so you, you just talked about Zoom has become like this juggernaut of a platform right now because right. so many people are learning about this. Uh, but it's, it's just a way to interact with someone. It's just a way to have a conversation, whether it's in a group setting or small. So those that are, don't know about Zoom already, Zoom is a wonderful platform, but it's very similar to GoToMeeting, uh, to Skype, to other ways to have video communications. Uh, and at all, all of them, I've been using this for four or five years now. I, I highly recommend it. Um, but that's one way of, of connecting with your customers. But just knowing like there's other ways of doing that. And so there's a lot of great products out there. And I'm going to give you a couple of my favorites just because I know people are always like, oh, what, what are you using? Um, and when, when I want to get people engaged, I absolutely, first of all, I think for my audience, Facebook is, is one of the best ways and social media is one of the best ways, mm -hmm. right? Um, email is still, no matter what, people are checking, people are actually caught up on their email. People actually are at inbox zero now, which <laughs> never happens, right? People are going through that. that. It's still a very powerful uh, way of communicating. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you, you've engaged with them, now you need to be able to, to understand them a little bit. And so getting in, into meetings and getting in talks. So Zoom is a great platform. Uh, I don't use Skype personally anymore. I think in Europe and other areas, it's still very, um, very useful. Um, but I, I use Zoom quite a bit. Um, and then when you're transitioning, it's like, how do I educate? How do I deliver that message? Um, one of the best ways to do it is right now is through webinars. Webinars are a great way of teaching people. Um, and so just tools, Zoom has a webinar platform. So if you're already used to Zoom, it has a great webinar platform. Webinar Jam is the one that I use and, and I, I recommend highly to people. Um, and then there's things like summits, right? And so I, I run an online summit, allows me to bring in professionals from all different areas. 
uh, and let people sign up for their talks. Um, and I highly recommend a product called Hey Summit. Um, and so they've launched the last couple of years. They, are, they do all the work for you, right? You just have to get the people, sign them up as speakers uh, and you can use Zoom to actually do the interaction. And then the last thing I'll, I'll, before, I know we want to get into some of the strategy, but just some of the tools, one other tool that I, I highly recommend if you're looking at doing conferences and your conference is now shut down, whether it's a 20 person conference or a 2000 person conference, there's a tool out there called hop in. Um, and so hop in allows you to set up great conference situations where people can have networking time. They can have vendor booths, like all those things. So those things that you think, well, man, those conferences are an in-person thing. No, there are absolutely ways to do this online and you can transition your model that way. So th those are some of the sides from the business side, but yeah. you can also use these in your personal life. It's uh, amazing. Like that is some nougats right there. So I will include these in the notes because I'm hearing things that I haven't even heard of, like the hop in, which is awesome. And in fact, um, I had a conference that was scheduled a couple weeks ago and what a bummer, they had to cancel. And I offered them a webinar, which I just offered last Tuesday. And I could not believe the number of women that showed up to this webinar. It was absolutely thrilling. So I was still able to build a connection with people. And then I was able to send them a recording of that webinar. So wow, what a beautiful way to connect, even in a time when people are not able to do that human connection. And we got a lot of really good positive uh, play. So definitely. Right, but just think as, a, as, as for you, how much more powerful that was actually probably than being at the conference. Because first of all, you were, smart enough and knew these tools enough to say, hey, I understand this. Is, I'm going to offer this to you. And then those people that would have normally gone to the conference and some of them may have connected with you afterwards. Some of them may not. Yes. Every one of them that came to your webinar, let your email contact information. So you probably grew your list quite a bit more just right. by adapting quickly and right. offering something. And I bet you those conference organizers loved you for it because they want yep. to deliver to their people as well. Absolutely. And it was also wonderful because that um, woman who was organizing, organizing the conference, I did an interview with her just like this because she has her whole field. So in the ways that this um, survived to thrive um, interviewing that I've done, I just jumped on it. I'm like, I, there are people that are amazing, that are spiritual warriors. They're people that are out there doing the good, good work and they're not familiar with this platform. And as we rise, we need to raise together. And so what way are you viewers rising up with other people? And that's why I'm doing it. I know that's why Sean is, works tirelessly in his industry as well. Yeah, so, yeah. and I, I, I would say that the challenge is not only is how are you doing in business, but how are you doing in your personal life too? Like, how yeah. are you using these tools? So, um, you know, kids adapt quickly. And so we're starting to see that, you know, kids are going on to virtual classrooms and things like that. We had a birthday party for my daughter a couple of days ago. And unfortunately, her friends couldn't be there, but we had people on there like holding phones so the <laughs> friends could participate and be their video. Um, and, and, you know, like we have... Um, friends that meet are doing uh, fitness challenges and they'll get on FaceTime and they'll, they'll work with each other on FaceTime four people at a time doing fitness challenges with each other. And so it's a way there's using these tools, not only in your professional life, but in your personal life to make sure that you strive and, and move forward is very important as well. Yeah, that's a great point. So I would love it if you would just, I know we talked about um, strategy and the reason why, which I love, and then tools. And what else would you, you had also touched about how to use these tools. That'd be awesome if you're interested in instructing us all or and anybody. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, learning to use these tools, people get a little scared. And because if they're like, oh, this is not for me, I don't do this. Oh, well, the truth is you've done this. Like I'm sure you've made a simple video on your cell phone. Like it's not that much different when you start to step into these platforms. Uh, and so it's just at one point, all it is is pointing that camera at you and just talking into the camera, right? And you, right. you're gonna have someone on the other side listening. And so it's, it's, it can be a little intimidating. Uh, people, you know, I start to work with people and I have this microphone that I use and I have an external camera and they're like, well, that's not me. Um, you know, and people, you know, like little things, people are like, well, your office is so clean and you're able to do that. Look, this is a backdrop. This is not an office, right? I'm <laughs> setting myself up for success. Yeah. Um, and I think that people can, can do that as well. So those of you who couldn't see, like I have something on my wall in my upstairs room so that it can set me, set me up for six, but you don't have to have all those things. Right. You just have to have a cell phone or a camera, uh, a, a laptop and a, who has a camera attached to it. And you just need to start getting comfortable on screen. Uh, and one of the biggest ways that I recommend doing that is to um, broadcast it out to nobody. 
right? One of the, one of the ways I've done this with a lot of people is I, on, so if you're on Facebook and I go to Facebook a lot, just because that's my platform of choice. I know I, I'm a little bit older, right? The, the Facebook generation. Um, but if you're on Facebook, one of the things you can do is create a small group with just you and your spouse or your coworker or just anybody and broadcast to that group only. So nobody else sees it. And it just allows you to play around and try these things mm -hmm. or just set the camera up and record and just kind of play around and try these things. I feel like the best way is to, is to broadcast it to some type of group, even if there's nobody in there, because you just get to try it a few times. And after about three, four times, you go, oh, this is not that yeah, bad. I don't look that bad or I didn't mess up because because I have to tell a, a quick story. I remember I was a bikini competitor for like 15 years up until actually since I was 50, I was 55. So like last year. Um, but anyway, I remember my coach filming me in my high heels and my bikini. And I was like, oh my God, I stumbled all the way through that. And I was like, oh, we got to do that all over again. And then I watched it. And guess what? You couldn't even notice my stumble. So we perceive our imperfections as being so ridiculously huge. And I have to tell you, you will be pleasantly surprised when you actually see how well you do. And that's another reason why I'm doing these interviews. Learn how to love on yourself. This is a, the world needs your voice. They need your voice. They, you need what's uniquely you. So just trust and believe that you are um, capable and able. Listen, I'm just on my computer. There's a couple of lamps right here next to me. I don't have a fancy mic. Right. I'm just like, all right, hit play. Oh, I'll figure that out. So just understand that's really legit true. I'm literally, I don't have a mic. I'm just talking into my computer. With yeah. And you'll like see reporters me. on national news stations right now that are recording their segments on their cell phone. So yes. the, the truth is that this is, is something that, that you don't have to feel bad about doing. And the other thing is when you start to do things that are more personal connection, people give you a ton of leeway on the video quality. And so we are so used to seeing commercial entities film these great videos that we're, you know, we're, we're consuming in commercials and these different advertisements. But how many times do you see people on Facebook Live with a Chewbacca mask just laughing and the camera's shaking, right? right? It, they give you so much leeway when it comes to, oh, this is now how it's supposed to be. It's no longer supposed to be polished and perfect. Right. It's supposed to be intimate and a connection. Well, and so that's exactly the how things now, are now. Right, Sean, with the news that are on right now, you're seeing all these professional doctors and they got garbage behind them and the lighting is terrible. And I'm always like, oh my gosh, they need to look at their camera. I'm, I'm thinking of it just because I think you got to stage at some level, but the, just take a gander at what you're seeing right now just watching the news. Yeah, and I, I'm a big believer on, you know, when people do live videos, it actually makes it more personable if there's imperfections, yes. right? If you're really trying to connect with people and everything you say is polished and perfect, like people don't connect with that. You need yeah. to be yourself. You need to let the camera move, it moves. It's not that big of a deal. Um, and, and, and you're gonna make those connections, whether it's webinars, uh, whether it is um, in-person Zoom calls. Um, if your, your dog runs through in the background, it's kind of funny. Let's talk about like, oh, you know, let's, let's talk about it. Like, let's, let's, let's bring it into the conversation because that makes you a real person. And I, it, it doesn't matter if you're dealing with your gym partner, if you're dealing with your kid's team, or you're dealing with a CEO of a company, they're all people and they're all dealing with this too. And if you can make that connection with them, then all of a sudden you guys actually have a more personal connection that you can build your relationship on. Uh, and that's like, I want all the viewers to hear that. You can do it. You're worthy of getting out there. The world is waiting for your unique words and actions, whatever that is. So yeah, Sean, that's awesome. That's some nougats right there. <laughs> That's and, awesome. and for everybody that's trying these things, there's a lot of resources out there. So I'm putting out resources. Um, I know that in, in the group that we work in, so in self-publishing school, we have a mastermind community uh, and we're sharing little tips with each other all the time on how to do this. So now's a good time to connect with other professionals and, and in groups like that. So like I said, our mastermind community is wonderful because we're able to connect. Kate and I are, are in another mastermind community that's a little bit smaller, uh, around 20 people. And that's really kind of just business professionals where we're sharing tips like this. So I encourage you to connect with Kate, um, people like her, in, and find ways to build networking groups where you can learn things. And whether it's you have a group for um, happy hour and you have a group for online marketing or, you know, like these groups of people who are who want to help each other moving forward, I highly recommend finding a mastermind group that you can be a part of uh, as you're going through this so you can build. And it doesn't have to be people that are 18 steps ahead of you in business. Exactly. It can be people that are going through it with you 
uh, right. because you guys are going to work this out and do even better and create these connections as you go. And it's not even people necessarily in your field. I mean, that's the thing that's also really important is your tribe can be different people from different fields. And I call it um, one of my coaching modules in my coaching uh, program is called creating your board of directors. And that could include anybody, it could include your therapist, your astrologer, your, you know, your coach, your fitness coach, your lawyer, your attorney, especially as an entrepreneur, as we all are right now. Let's just get real. We are all entrepreneurs of our lives. We really truly are. And I think that's a great image. Who do you want at your table? Who is at your, who is at your board of directors table? And who is there now that doesn't, um, hasn't deserved that spot there? Maybe you need to give some more space to some more people who are going to help you up level. Because oftentimes when we're going through big transformational changes, there are people that's in our, that are in our tribe that maybe don't want our highest and best. So now's a great time to evaluate. And I know Chandler talked about this, who is the one that founded, um, self-publishing school, sometimes we need to filter away people that maybe want to dim our light or don't want our best self. So be selective, be committed to your best self, and be courageous enough to lean into these platforms for sure. Yeah, and this is a great time to really hone in on your message that you can use to help people right? This is a time that you can say, hey, I've got either things are changed. My life is a little bit different. I am going to now write my book or I'm going to develop my course or I'm going to bring my business online. Something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Now is the time change has happened. Okay, let's deal with it and let's move forward. And it doesn't have to be just for those that are like, you know, home and don't have like, there's a lot of people who are either furloughed or home uh, and have more time. And if you do, that is wonderful. Spend that time wisely. But there are a lot of us that are just as busy as we ever were. Uh, and that doesn't mean now is not the time for you. You can still do this. I wrote my first book. I know I had two jobs and I was like, I need to get away from having different jobs that I'm working and working weekends and holidays. So I took my time at night and weekends to write uh, when I wasn't working. Uh, and I was able to do it then and build my online presence then. Uh, and you can do it now. Like this is the time. Sometimes we just need a spark or a reason to yes. relaunch our image. The ass, Sean. Some people need a kick in the ass. <laughs> yeah. And this is a big one. Like it's affecting the world right now. Exactly. Uh, and it's a great time to, to say, let me try these things. Mm -hmm. Let me look at how to, how to update a website of my, of my, so one of the things we talk about in the online movement summits is a website is no longer just something to talk about your business. It has to be a way for people to engage. So does your website even have that? When you're working with people personally, do you have a way that they can connect with you? If you don't, you need to let people know how they can because you used to see them at the gym or you used to see them at happy hour or you used to see them around the office. Reach out, let them know this is how to connect with me because you have to have a way for people to connect with you now that's different than it was before. Yeah, and, and there are many ways that people can reach out to you. And I think that was the, the part about when I was doing that online you know, the webinar for the um, conference attendees that they may have not been courageous enough to reach out to me at the conference because maybe they weren't extroverted, but they're sitting in the same room and they're feeling like they're having an intimate connection with me. That can, that, that is, cannot be underestimated the power to which of that conversations um, changes people's lives. It really does. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, one of the things that this as an action item, if you haven't done this already, is to, e like I said, either join a mastermind or create a group, like create a group that you can be part of or lead. Um, and it can be uh, a volleyball training club, right? It can be <laughs> like the hula group, it, but it can be something that is like, let's learn how to use Zoom. I actually created a small group where it's like, I'm just teaching people how to use Zoom right now because I think that's super important for educational professionals, um, you know, people who weren't using it before. Uh, and it's something that I can lead and be a part of. And, and I'm learning what people really need. And if I wanted to, to make that my next product, guess what? I'm learning a ton about what's really needed out there in the market. Um, but I'm also testing my abilities and doing things. So um, if you haven't done already, join groups, um, uh, create something that doesn't have to be Facebook. I know that's what the platform I use. Right. There's LinkedIn, there is, you know, like there's, there's groups well, everywhere meetup, you can do. Meetup is one that, you know, it's mm -hmm. easy enough to create groups. And yeah, like you said, anything that interests you, even if it's zany and crazy, the people who are really successful are following that truth, even though it feels weird. It's like, oh my gosh, like I really love to like build like birdhouses. Do you think anyone would be interested? Hell yeah. You know, so don't think it's too weird or obscure. You will have followers. And some of the biggest podcasts 
are strange. They are just like, who would ever listen to that podcast? And they're because they're unique and different to that person that creates it. So trust your instincts and trust your passion. This is your time to rise up and live into your passion. Yeah. And I, I love that because it, you know, they say the riches are in the niches. Well, it's also part, not just for making money, it's for your, your inner self as well. Uh, so if you like something, I love Star Wars audiobooks. I love them. Like I just, so there are plenty of people out there that do as well. And so it's like, we could just talk about that something. It's a way for me to be socially engaged during this time. Uh, and you can see as a marketplace, Facebook is now doing television ads about groups because groups are so important in the future. People are learning to connect. Um, so it's just a great way for you to, to build that out and, and build that connection. And, and I always talk about like, if I'm doing the, like the online movement is great. There's lots of businesses going online. If I'm doing the online movement uh, for authors and coaches, that's well, that's going to fit better. If I'm doing it for personally middle-aged entrepreneurs, Right. That's even better because people may get intimidated by either younger or people more successful than themselves. So right. just think about those, like, don't be afraid of who you are um, and be able to let others know this is who I am in my life. And this is how I want to project myself. Uh, and it's really important that during this time, people see an authentic you because they're not going to be able to get that normal social interaction. So all your online presence needs to be authentic as well. Right. And, you know, hang on and with younger populations. I mean, this is bottom line is, is that I'm 56, but I'm like in a group with self-publishing school because they're all 20, 30 somethings. And so I'm wanting to be where people understand the crest of the ways of technology. And it's okay to say, I don't know, you know, particularly men. It's okay to say, I don't know, because there are people around you that will help you. And if you're thinking that, you know, and historically that this has not been, a, that social media has been in your mind, a place where people escape to, understanding that that, need, that thinking potentially needs to change, that it's a really a great place to build deeper intimacy. I mean, when Sean, in our life previous to this, I mean, clearly you're a hands-on working kind of guy with your work, and I was too with my personal training and my coaching. But when are we ever full front, heart to heart, face to face for, you know, over 30 minutes with another human being? It is so intimate, you guys. I can't, um, I can't recommend it enough. Yeah, and it's not hard to do. So you can do this. You can get your computer, get your laptop, and just set up and practice with people. Um, and you know, find ways to connect. And I, we talked about you know, business ways, personal ways. I really do, for those of you out there that are exercising regularly, uh, and you had a gym partner, or you at least had a group, it, you need that in your life too. Right. Yes. Uh, and so um, right now, I think the two biggest things that are missing in my life are exercise and sports. Right. Yeah. Those two things. I, I have an ability to do everything else, but I am missing those two things. And so I am making time for both of those. And so we have time to exercise. Um, I have sports teams or people that I engage with with sports. So um, I'm making time to say, hey, this is the time we interact. Uh, and we talk about sports, right? And we have fun yeah. with it. And we and also know. like, Sean, I think that you also mentioned too, that you are generally more of an introverted type of person, right? I mean, I am. And I know a lot yeah. of people like, I, when I'm on camera like this, I always say like, I have two different personalities. You have your on stage and off stage, right? And my right. off stage personality is I am fairly introverted. So I don't have a group of friends outside of my work, my coworkers, my kids, and my family. Like, you know, those are the people I hang out with. So right. I've had to make an effort to be able to say, no, I need this social interaction. I need to, to have somewhere where I'm talking sports with someone. Uh, I need to have somewhere where I'm, so I've had to make an effort for this. Uh, and I think that if you, if you allow yourself just to go into that shell, because it's easy right now, it's easy to say no, yes. social distancing. I need to be by myself. I need to be isolation, self quarantine. That does not mean that socially you have to do that. That is talking physically, right? You don't yes. have to do that socially and emotionally. And if we fall into that, we are working with so many seniors right now who are falling into that category. Um, and what they're doing is they're, they're in their, either in their home or in a nursing home and they are by themselves. Mm -hmm. And if I can give one big thing right now is make time each day to connect with someone in your life that may be in that situation. Yes. whether it's an aunt, an uncle, a parent, reach out to them in that situation because they have lost a lot of that too. And it will help both of you. Um, but just know, especially seniors in your life. And if you are watching this and that's who you are, like 
find time to reach out to those that are around you that are in the same situation or people you want to connect with and say, let's make a time to do this and make yes. it regular because it's, that is absolutely missing for a lot of people. Yeah. And there's no, like, even you could be a senior group. I mean, there are ways and I'm here to help. And certainly Sean is. So if you do need help with the steps that are necessary, please feel free to reach out because we're here to help you. To can talk pickleball strategy all day. Yeah, exactly. That's so awesome. I love it. And again, this is not just for those extroverted people. I am actually more of an introvert than most people think. And Sean, as he said, is that. So this isn't just for the bold. This is also for the people that are here to driven with purpose, even quietly as we come into the camera and me putting on a little lipstick, right? But showing up is a big thing. And again, showing up for the people that are isolated Again, this isn't about uh, social isolation, it's social distancing, and there is a difference for sure. Yeah, so any last minute words, Sean? Because I know you are super busy and I wanna be respectful of your time. Well, I appreciate that. Um, no, I, I would say that my last words are just, this is a time to learn and time to make changes, right? That, like you said, people need a kick in the butt. Uh, this is a good one to say, okay, I need to learn to schedule things. Maybe I never did that in my life because my work automatically scheduled for me. I had to show up at this time. I had a meeting at this time. And now maybe I don't have those. So this is a way to learn how to put, you know, put yourself on a schedule. And it may be a lot of, for me personally, it's how to learn how to budget because I need to budget my finances and I need to budget my time. And it wasn't something I had as much to worry about before. So this is a time for me to learn those new skills. Um, learn to like how to get your message out, learn a skill, whether it's writing your book, which I absolutely recommend for anybody out there. I know Kate's been part of self-publishing school. I was there as a student. I'm there as a teacher now. I think it's really important to be able to say, this is a time for me to really get my message out. Right. Um, so I think that- John, you have to share the fact that how much you love writing. <laughs> I, so, Tell him, so, Sean. Yes. So Kate knows that I'm, I'm involved with self-publishing school and I have been there for years. I've written several books. Um, I've written textbooks. I've written peer-reviewed <laughs> journal articles. I've written several books. I hate writing. I, I absolutely hate writing. <laughs> Um, I tell people all the time, I am a terrible writer, oh. but I am a best-selling author. Uh, and that's because I said, I have to do this to get passive income. I am sick of working weekends. I have a good message. I have knowledge. Let me find a way to share it. So I wrote it and, and I, I love the reviews I sometimes get on my book. There's, the information in this book was great. He needs a better copy editor. Like that's the best review I've ever gotten because people go, most people who read my book go, I don't, it's, it's about back exercises, right? Yeah. It's about psychopathy. They go, I don't care about the copy. If he has good information, that's what I want. Right. But you don't have to love writing to get your book done and get your message out. That's you true. can get that message out, get help, get coaching to go through it. That's what we provide at self-publishing school. Um, you can get editors to help you. You would ne like the, the textbook that I helped write the chapter on, which just released in January, it took, I wrote that three years ago, by the way. That's how long the traditional publishing world takes. Wow. Um, the book itself sells for 390 some odd dollars. It's this ridiculous orthopedic surgery textbook, right? Um, but I hated every minute of writing that book. Uh, but I, they didn't just take my words. We had editing teams that went through it. So right. don't think like you, like, there's ways to get your message out. Even if you love or hate writing, you can still get your message out and get, get followers and people. Yeah, that's the best. And, you know, again, self-publishing school, if you are a part of that, you can play with me and Sean because we are both there inside that community commenting and supporting you with the great self-publishing school team. So, Sean, thank you so much for this time. I super appreciate it. I was so honored that you said yes to being part of Survive and Thrive. Absolutely. You know, I, I, anytime I get to interact with you, I love it. And for those that are listening anyway, um, I'm happy to be a resource for people. Um, I'm happy to, you know, you can reach out to Kate, you can reach out to me directly. I'm happy to be a resource uh, and help people, you know, learn these things. Uh, so thank you for, for taking the time to talk with me. And I'm sure we'll talk a, a ton in the near future. Yeah, thanks a lot. And thanks again. And to the community, please be safe. And remember, this is a time where you can not only survive, but thrive. Take care.